and welcome to a new video. I know it has been a while, but um, I have been on a lot of lives. So um, if you've missed me, I hope that you have watched um, the lives that I did with Books on Toast, with the Book Bound Club, that I did with myself. Um, and three other amazing Indian booktubers on this very channel um, on Indian partition. So I'm gonna link all of those things down below in case you've been missing my pretty beautiful face. But I am here now with a video um, and it is a review of a book that I have been anticipating for a while now. Ever since I heard of it, I was like, I need to get my hands on this ASAP. And then I got my hands on it and I read it and I'm going to talk to you about it because it needs to be talked about, guys. It just needs to be talked about. But also, you know what? I am also going to be gifting you this book. Yes, not all of you, just one of you get to get that gift and that is the giveaway so I'm going to be giving giveaway I'm going to be giving away <laughs> this book um, to one lucky winner um, on on this YouTube channel and then also on my Instagram but anyway um, the book in question is this one which is the song of Draupadi by Ira Mukhoti now isn't this just the most beautiful cover you have seen like look at that look at her eyes they're looking at you and then just the back also it's beautiful but um this book is by Ira Mukhoti who is of course a very well-renowned author in India she is actually a person who writes mostly a lot of fiction non-fiction in fact um she writes a lot about history and especially about women in history in India and this is her first sort of book in the fiction genre and she chose to write about the women in the Mahabharat. Now, the women in Mahabharat is not like a new trope that we have heard. The most famous book that we have seen um, doing this where we see the Mahabharat but from the women's perspective is of course The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Devakaruni. However, this book I think is very very different because while that tells you the story of the Mahabharata through the women's perspective, this tells you the story of the women in the Mahabharata. Um, and that is something that I absolutely loved. I love to get to know these women and get to see their anger and like, ooh, it was just a really good time. Now, I'll just quote directly what Ira Mukherjee was trying to do um, from this book from her author's note because she is more... Um, eloquent than I am um, but what she says is if there are indeed as many versions of the Mahabharat as there are people on earth then this is the one that resonates best with me a version in which the women are imperfect in which they are noisy and railing and furious rather than pleading and silenced this then is a song set to these women's meter to their many clamorous harmonies and that is exactly what this book is I um, absolutely loved it and I am here to now talk to you more about it. Now for those who don't know what the Mahabharat is, it is an epic story that us in South Asia, India in particular, have been listening to for ever for centuries and centuries it was written by vyasa like centuries god alone knows when um and it has so many different iterations um and is translated into so many different languages it is so expansive that the hindu religious text the bhagavad gita is actually just a part of the mahabharat um now if i have to explain to you what the story is about it is a little difficult um because as i said it is very expensive but if i have to like kind of like condense it into like a sentence or two it is basically about brothers and families fighting against each other for land for respect um and for the throne so was this the original game of thrones maybe while the epic itself has the men and their actions on the forefront and the women on the sides or as plot devices, this has the women in the center with the men on the sideline. Um, Ira Mukhoti in her author's note herself says that there will be times in this book where she moves away from the battles and from the battlefield and goes to the women um, and see what they are dealing with and what they are going through, what they are thinking. And that is something that I really, really enjoyed because that's something that I had never really seen before. 
What I also found interesting was even though this book is called The Song of Draupadi and Draupadi is a huge factor in this book and is one of the main protagonists, um, we not only hear of her but also the other women and by the other women I mean women that came three to four generations before her. Um, so for example we get to hear of Ganga and Satyavati and um, Amba and Ambika and Ambalika, um, then there's Gandhari and there's Kunti and there's Madri and there's so many other women that we sort of kind of see and we sort of kind of know who they are and we see them on the sidelines but we don't know their stories we don't know their histories we don't know their emotions we don't know what they were going through um what they thought um and we got to see this fictionalized version of that of of like their actual histories but also what they might be thinking and what they were going through which i just had never really seen before so i really really appreciated that so yeah, in the beginning it was a little confusing because we got to see Draupadi just a little bit and then we went back to the past and I was confused as to what was happening but I in the end really really appreciated how we went about it and how we got to know all of these women. Another thing that I thought was super interesting in this book that I haven't really seen in any other iterations of the Mahabharat was how the godliness of each character was sort of removed or removed as much as possible. So for example, Ganga who is uh, the mother of Bhishma um, and is supposedly a goddess in all of the other iterations um, is seen as a girl who lived by the river um, and then married the king and then when she had all her sons she probably went through a lot of postpartum depression um, and thus sacrificed her children into the river um, and then one of course stayed alive which was Bhishma and then when Bhishma um, himself is killed in like for example the Mahabharata and the battlefield he does not survive the the battle uh, for 11 days on a bed of arrows but dies instantaneously um, and is slain um, and that's something which I really really appreciated because it went with logic um, and that just made sense it made them humane and the characters as I said were so humane and great so for example Bhishma who takes the vow of celibacy and decides to abdicate the throne for the love of his father has doubts he actually like starts thinking of whether this decision was the right one um, and questions himself and no Gandhari did not have 100 children but Dhritarashtra, her husband, had children with other concubines and they just accepted all of these children as their own but Gandhari was the only queen, the only accepted queen and thus it was a hundred children that she had. She also in this book was not a person who decided to be blindfolded and be blind for the rest of her life because her husband couldn't see so she didn't want to experience things that her husband wasn't experiencing but it was an act of defiance because she was deceived um, into becoming Dhritarashtra who was the blind king's um, wife so and she knew that the only reason why she was being chosen was because she was going to be his eyes so as an act of defiance she said no I will not and hence she blindfolded herself so that like people would not be able to take advantage of her and that's just amazing all of this defiance and anger and self-righteousness is what we saw throughout this book in not only her character but in so many other characters which I absolutely loved but of course it wasn't just that it was also anger and cunningness and ruthlessness that we saw throughout and it was just an interesting amalgamation of all of these things that made all of these characters feel so humane for the first time in like so many years of me reading this epic. The writing itself was really great though I do have to say it is a little intermediary um, levels not quite um, easy to understand English. I myself had to um, google a lot of things along the way for example what does weft mean and what does irascible mean? I got to know now so um, maybe that's a good thing maybe if you want to improve your grammar and uh, like vocabulary you can do that with this book because you really have to google a lot of things but I appreciated it. Now before I end this review I cannot not talk about how brilliantly this book was written in terms of the atmosphere. Just I felt like I was hallucinating while reading this book because it was just described so well. Um, the ducks taking off before they migrated and touching the Ganges before they left um, or the palaces or the cities or the, the forests or everything. It was just described so well that I felt like I was right there with them. Um, it was just such 
such a wonderful thing to see um and i absolutely loved the way like the atmosphere and this book absolutely came to life because of that the book itself is very character driven and i absolutely love that um i feel like people who are used to seeing the mahabharat as this very plot heavy moving from one thing to the other sort of story will be taken aback by this so do keep that in mind um though i absolutely adored um getting to know everything that this book had to give to me um and i gave this book a 4 4.5 out of 5 now for the giveaway um i am giving away one book here um and for you to participate all you have to do is be subscribed to me hopefully please um but also uh, comment down below with one character one female character from the mahabharat that you would like to get to know more about now if you are a person who hasn't read the mahabharat or don't know much about the mahabharat just comment down below with your favorite female character in general fictional character and why you would like to read this book um that is all uh, the deadline for this i think will be the 11th or 12th i don't quite know i will put all the details in the description down below so check that out and then go ahead with it um and that is all i will be back with more reviews and videos um i hope that you enjoyed this one also i have um another giveaway on my instagram so if you are following me on my instagram you should follow that because i'm giving away two books on my instagram so uh -huh. all right okay bye i will see you in my next video bye